No chef has shaped more in how I cook, eat and enjoy food more than Heston Blumenthal. If you've spent any time around this YouTube page or around my blog, bigspud.co.uk, you'll find dozens and dozens of articles, recipes and posts from me all about Heston Blumenthal. His work, his recipes, his life, his career. Um, to say I find him interesting is an understatement. The way he looks at food is absolutely fascinating. And, and when he burst onto the scene, he turned the culinary world on its head, creating the Fat Duck restaurant, among others. The Fat Duck at one point was the best restaurant in the world. He's had dozens of TV series, loads of appearances, celebrity endorsements and recipes by the dozen. But today I want to go through his cookbooks one by one. Being Heston Sado that I am, I've got all of his books and I want to share with you uh, what each one means and what I think it's best for. So here we go, the, the seven books of Heston Blumenthal ranked. <laughs> Number seven, it's Fantastic Feasts. A fine read, but hard work. You might recall there was a series on Channel 4 and he went through different themed menu nights. Very, very oddball things. Full disclosure. I've never cooked anything out of this because everything in it is absolutely out there. It's really properly insane. Again, you get the conversational um, Heston style, talking through how he did some, why he did something, a menu, and then a how you do it for each things. And they're all quite detailed, lots in, but the whole point is you end up with a proper showstopper. It's a fun read with some lovely photography. I'll be honest, I'm more inclined to go and watch the series, which had all of his guests, celebrities of the time, that went turned up and ate this food. But uh, it's a one-off read. I'd read it, I've read it once, I don't think I've ever gone back to it. Enjoyable, but there you go. In six, Family Food. A good book, but just lacking that Heston spark, as he hadn't quite found his voice yet. Um, not a very Heston title, and not a very common book. You won't see it on many people's shelves. I'm indebted to my friend Simon for buying this to me for one birthday. Thank you very much. Um, it rarely crops up in lists. Um, the name is obviously interesting in itself. Family food. It's not how we associate Heston. This is from 2002. Uh, Heston, with his then wife Zanna, had a young family at the time. And I think he was very, very focused on education. He'd not long completed a course of videos with the Royal Society of Chemistry, most of which are available on YouTube, if you look around. Um, and it just demonstrates how he wanted to infuse a love of science and method with how you cook. And this is the start of that. I get the impression of a Heston reined in of just not going crackers. There's a few odd balls in here, but generally speaking, this is really approachable stuff. I mean, Taking a look through, I mean, there's a picture of him with his children, and notably he has hair. Um, there's two young children making salt crust hay chicken. You make a dough and then wrap a chicken in it and roast it. Not difficult at all, just a bit unusual. Um, cream of tomato soup. There's many things in here that are very Heston specific. He has a real thing about green vegetables and keeping them green and keeping them exactly the right shade of green. And there's lots of different articles about that in here. There's a very heavy French influence. He, he got his start studying the French bistros. That's how he learnt his trade, by copying and cloning French bistro recipes. And you can, set, you can tell that here. He's doing it over and over again. So there's lots of really approachable, fun recipes in here. Not a lot of photography. I'm willing to bet the publisher didn't really take a bet on him at the time. In this point in his life, he was really establishing the fat duck. It wasn't quite, uh, he wasn't quite a household name at this point. He hadn't had his own TV show. He was still very well regarded amongst restaurant critics and foodie people, but relatively unknown. So therefore, it's a fun book but not his best by some stretch, because I think he had more to say that wasn't in this book yet. I don't think he'd found his confidence yet. But it's surely an interesting article for understanding exactly how he works. In fifth place, it's Is This a Cookbook? It is a cookbook. <laughs> and that's what lets it down. It's a normal cookbook with thoughts from Heston. It was 2022, saw the release of Is This a Cookbook? Which I'm going to review as if it's a cookbook. Um, Adventures in the Kitchen. This has a two-headed approach 
to the food inside. So for example, Jubilee Coronation Chicken. Heston was asked to make the menu for the Queen's Golden Jubilee Picnic and he made Jubilee Coronation Chicken. As you can see, recipe on one side, but on the other side, his thoughts as to how this works and why it works and substitutions and exactly why he did the things he did. So a real good dip into Heston's brain. He's got some quite mad Heston things. There's a bit about just enjoying a sandwich. Literally go sit on a park bench and just eat your favorite sandwich. And it sounds a bit mad, but it's totally Heston because Heston is all about the sensations you have when you're eating food. Not just how it tastes, but how it smells, what you can hear, what you can feel, the texture. He's all about multi-sensory dining, which is a terrible way to say, just enjoying everything about your food uh, and being sucked into that world of your food. There's also a whole section on here, which is probably a bit too soon. A whole section on here on eating with cricket powder. Um, a little bit different. Trying to change how we move forward in the world that will need to consume less meat. I think it's probably too early for this chapter in our universe, but I dare say we'll come back to this one in a few years time and realize how uh, revolutionary it was. I don't believe it's come out to great acclaim. It's sort of sunk into the radar. I think there's a combination of, Heston isn't really in the UK limelight. He spent a lot of time in Australia with Celebrity MasterChef and lives in France. And I think his UK presence um, he's finished his relationship with Waitrose, so I think you just don't see him around so much anymore. And this cookbook seemed to appear and then disappear straight away. Um, almost nobody was talking about it. But hey, it's a really fun, approachable book with lots of interesting things in there, I promise you. Lots of interesting recipes that, again, are not crazy. Mac and cheese. Of course, it's not just mac and cheese. But there's not, look at that recipe list, it's tiny, it's tiny. So there's some really interesting things in here and well worth a read. In four, The Fat Duck Cookbook, 2009, and The Fat Duck Restaurant has become an institution, thus you get The Fat Duck Cookbook. I hesitate again, there was an absolutely ridiculous super deluxe version of this that, if memory serves, was like 150 pounds or more at launch. Comes in a black slip case, incredibly gorgeous, but hell, I don't own one. Um, so I've got the standard version. Um, it's the kind of book that people buy and go, oh my God, and don't read again. So you can find copies secondhand really easily. If you are at all interested in the science of food, I cannot recommend this enough. The Fat Duck Cookbook is actually a story in three sections. Let me explain. This is where we start to get David McKean's illustrations, which have come to typify uh, Heston's work over the years. And he's used him to create all sorts of things. So the first part is more a sort of history of the fat duck and his cooking himself. I draw on a lot of this when making my Heston Blumenthal biography video. Uh, and then we get to the actual recipes themselves dated because the fat duck menu evolved over years. It's now a, a fairly static set menu, but over the years he added snail porridge. He's added all different things, all the classics that we now know to be Heston. Again, stunning, very stark photography. And then the third part of the book is pure science. It's just discussions of techniques. It's discussions of equipment. It's very, very detailed stuff, talking about parts of the brain and how they interact with your food and exactly what happens. Not light bedtime reading, but again, if you're into that sort of thing, it's absolute heaven. If you ever read the books of Harold McGee, it's, it's his love letter to Harold McGee, Harold McGee his great friend. Um, so I, you know, you, if you can get a cheap copy, it's a fun read. You probably won't ever make a single recipe out of it. I have, because I'm insane. I've made Sound of the Sea, for example. You go back through my archive and you can find that. But this is not light reading. There's a lot going on. Um, and it's heavy as hell. You know, you, you can't read it in bed. In three, Historic three. Heston. A great book, really enjoyable full of really interesting things to read and facts that you probably didn't know. Heston has always been quite obsessed with the history of food, particularly British food, of course. Um, British food, as we know, has been much maligned in the 20th century and hopefully undergoing something of a resurgence. Him digging back through the archives, whoosh, is what led to historic Heston Blumenthal and essentially as a companion to the launch of his restaurant dinner at Hyde Park Hotel. And 
This is probably the best read out of all of them because it's not really a recipe book, though there's lots of recipes in it. It's actually a timeline of key recipes that he's found throughout history, back to the very first uh, recipe he could find. Looking at the timeline of how he explores food there through all of these, coming forward into the 19th century. So there's lots of interesting things in here. Again, beautiful photography. All of his books have incredible photography. You'll then have an essay on how he discovered the recipe and the history of it and what was going on in the country at the time, and then how that plays out into a finished recipe. Very detailed recipes that are quite difficult and often involve things that are quite hard to find. Pectin NH, Verdue de Perigord, so not easy, but you know, it wasn't what he was aiming for. He was trying to take a historic dish and bring it up to date. And that's exactly what this is. Again, the David McKean illustrations throughout are just fun. A really interesting read. And again, sorry, another heavy one, but one for the history buffs among you. Into, ugh, it's the In Search of Perfection volumes. They're really enjoyable and you learn a lot about what goes into making a recipe absolutely perfect the way Heston likes it. There's lots of his lively dialogue in there and I just find them fun reads and I go back to them very often. Note these are also available as a combined volume. Um, I'll cards on the table, I don't own that version because it is literally both of these just put together in one single volume with a great big close up of his face. This is where he started to become really well known as a prime time BBC series. This is where Heston made his name to the wider population because they watched this guy doing frankly quite insane things, um, deep frying whole chickens, putting vodka into batters, about injecting a black forest gateau with cherry liqueur. With this book and its companion, but I'm going to talk about them as if they're one book because they're all from both seasons of In Search for Perfection. I'd probably insert a clip of it here, but my God, if you try to insert a clip of In Search of Perfection in any video, it gets taken down like a shot. So there's actually only, one moment, one, eight there. There's only 16 recipes between these two books, 16 recipes between these non inconsiderable volumes. And there's a reason for that. And I think it makes it a brilliant, distinctive pair of volumes. Really interesting, I'll tell you why. So. Let's look up something close to my heart. Roast chicken and roast potatoes, which takes up about 30 odd pages. Now, it's quite widely spaced. There's a nice, gentle style, very conversational. It's very much Heston's words on the page. You can tell it's not heavily edited. He has a very, oh, okay, off we go. Very chatty uh, enthusiasm that he imbues into most of his work. Really, what he does is he goes through each element of the dish and tells you about how he researches the best and then finds it. So here, for example, he's searching for the very best chicken in a poulet au bresse that he goes to find and then evaluates different ways to cook it. And then we look at the potatoes and he tries every potato and he takes measurements and finds out the dry matter in them. So you really understand why he makes particular decisions and exactly what you get at the end. Stunning photography from Simon Wheeler. And then you get the recipe themselves. Very detailed, but not difficult to follow, um, even though they are not standard uh, Delia Smith, Jamie Oliver recipes. No slight in any of those. I'm just saying he does things differently. Injecting a chicken once it's finished with its own juices, things like that. Other Heston twists that make it. These are really great curios. They make great fun reading because there's something a little bit different about them. But number one, my favorite Heston book is Heston Blumenthal at Home. I may be biased in that I have a signed copy, but still it's got the things I've cooked the most out of. And I go back to it often for inspiration uh, to take things in a different direction. It's really enjoyable. Um, I've got a real special connection to this book because I managed to get it signed. I uh, managed to get it signed and it therefore it's pride of place in my collection. You can actually see it bowed where it sat on the bookshelf and I've got something tagged in there. Oh, that was Pan Perdue back when I made egg and bacon ice cream. So this is probably Heston at his most approachable at this point. There's still not just recipes.
There's lots of discussion about how the food works, but the recipes are incredibly simple. Yet again, stunning photography, this time Angela Moore. Really, really good work. I mean, that's blacks and purples, it's beautiful. Um, discussing how he makes something from start to end and his philosophies. And you really do get the impression this is Heston cooking for himself. It's like family food evolved forward a decade. This is how he eats, including his treaties on sous vide and why everybody should do it. Approachable recipes, I'm gonna be honest. Some aren't, some aren't approachable at all. But there are a lot of things in here that are the lemon tart recipe is an absolute showstopper. Um, I'd thoroughly recommend you have a go at that one. So I've said I've got a personal connection to this book, but it's really enjoyable. There's lots going on. There's lots of fun tips in there that aren't scary. There's lots of stuff in here that you can do yourself. Um, it's not Monday evening cooking. It's probably Saturday afternoon cooking, but all the same. There's lots of fun recipes to try in here. You'll find links to all those books in the description below, so you can browse at your own leisure. Some of these books have been around a while, so you can pick up bargains for a lot of them. Take a gamble on a used copy, see how you get on. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you own any of Heston's books? Do you enjoy them? Did you give it straight to the charity shop? Let me know in the comments down below. Please consider liking the video and hitting subscribe. And if there's someone you know who likes Heston Blumenthal books, or just cookbooks in general, please share it with them and see what they think. I'd love to know your opinion. Bye for now. I'm just off to do some reading. Crab lasagna. Poached fish. Celeriac remoulade. Mmm.